All right, so. Ooh, that's not a good color. There. Hydrogens, spectral lines. So what we did was we took a tube. There's a way to draw a straight line here. I bet you there is. Yeah, that works on some... I don't think that works on here, though. Black. And to our eye, I would say that that tube looked roughly like that color, probably, eh? Okay? So, if we apply a high voltage across here, okay, and remember, what this is, or what this represents, is it represents a tube filled with like very very low pressure hydrogen gas okay we put it in a special device that puts i'm, I'm not sure i think it's about 2000 volts across there so it's, it's quite a high voltage and um you know um basically what's going on is is electrons are uh i'm gonna go back to my pencil the electrons are are entering and they're traveling through the tube and they're exciting the gas and what that does is it causes a glow to come out of there Okay, which we can see with our eyes. Okay, our eyes perceive it as being this purpley color. However, if you look at it with your tube, uh, color. so here's your spectroscope that we tried to draw before, and you know you put your eye on the one end of it. What you will see is the spectrum of this is missing a whole bunch of stuff right so what you'll see is you'll see a kind of a purpley blue line then you'll see a big well not a huge gap then you'll see like a turquoisey color and then you'll see kind of way off over here at the far end you'll see red okay so if you want to think about this as being like a prism part of the light is shining here there's a gap we're missing a whole bunch of wavelengths and there's another one over here and another one over here okay this is where, noticing this is where Bohr got the idea, and I mean there's other stuff that went into it, but got the idea for the Bohr model of the atom, okay? So the explanation for this kind of goes like this. Um, so let's say we have a, an atom. Uh, I want that to be a different color. Brown. <laughs> Okay, just learning as I go here, guys. Okay, so, so here we have an atom, right? Let, like, let's say that represents the nucleus of the atom. Um, and let's just say here, like this, and we want to have a ring around it. Can I move this? I don't know. Ah, sweet, I can. Okay, so we're talking about hydrogen here. What do I know about the center of a hydrogen atom? What's in there? One single proton. Perfect. And that must mean then that outside on this ring, there is one electron. Okay. Now this is this is this is the hydrogen um, that's in the tube. Now technically it's it's H two, but uh, we're not going to get into into that just yet. Um, in other words, it's bonded to another hydrogen to make a molecule. We'll get there eventually, but what we need to know is how do you get how do you get this concept of a Bohr model um, out of this? So you remember before the Bohr model, the, people did know that there was a there was a positive nucleus, and actually I've drawn it much too large comparatively. It would just be a tiny speck in the middle here, um, and and Rutherford fi figured that out by uh, by shooting alpha particles at at gold foil, um, but they thought the atom looked like you've often probably seen this drawing of of atoms like from way back when. Okay, it's kind of like this, um, where the atoms are just orbiting sort of randomly around. And uh, Bohr's model is a little bit different than that. What it says is, out here are other shells. Now we know about that, right? We know that there's new shells every time you start a new period. But it turns out that even the electron from hydrogen 
can go up to these other levels if you excite it enough. Okay? So how do you excite an electron? Well, in the case of this tube, you excite an electron by putting high voltage across it, right? So, so essentially what's going on here is that energy is entering this atom and that energy is being absorbed by the electron here and it's tending to, you know, to, we could think of it as, as moving faster and faster. And what it will do is it will leap up to these higher energy levels, okay? And when it's in a higher energy level, right, you can think of it as moving faster, it's got extra energy inside of it, but spontaneously, it will fall back down to a lower energy level, okay? Spontaneously mean, just means that it, it just happens randomly, I guess, okay? And what it turns out happens is, if it falls from this energy level to this energy level, it loses energy in the process, right? This is a higher energy and this is a lower energy, and the way that it loses energy is by emitting light. And it turns out that the amount of energy between this level and this level corresponds to a wavelength that's red. That's this guy, which you'll see in the light, okay? If the electron falls to here, it will emit a different wavelength that looks like that. Okay? And if it falls all the way down, it will emit a higher energy wavelength that gives you that purple color. Okay? So Bohr and, and others noticed that this element had this very strange spectrum that only had very specific lines in it. Okay? And he was able to describe why those lines appeared. By, by, by taking this idea that there's very specific amounts of energy, that electrons can only sit on very certain energy level rings, and they can never exist in between them. If they could, you would see an entire spectrum as, as electrons moved up and down to fractional energy levels and would fill in all of these blanks. This is kind of neat. What it means is there's very specific quantities of energy and very specific wavelengths of light we later learn actually correspond to things called photons, but that's for physics class next year. Um, and, and that electrons can only ever exist in between these levels. So now let's think about the sun, right? What does the sun do? How does the sun make its energy? How does that happen? Does anyone know? Can we just say it's really hot without getting too into why the sun burns? I think you guys probably went over it in astronomy last year. Nuclear fusion, does that ring a bell? High pressure, high heat, yeah. So inside the sun, there's so much energy that electrons are zipping up and down in numerous different elements, mostly hydrogen, but numerous different elements, um, helium and so on. And it's so hot that it emits the entire spectrum of light, which is why we see it there. Now that doesn't happen in our tube. Our tube only has hydrogen and only has electrons leaping up and down in these very specific energy levels. This is where we get the Bohr model from. Okay? Now this is important because it allows us to build our entire periodic table in a very logical way. And it leads into understanding how different elements react with one another. Okay? So we'll stop there. That's just a little reminder. I see I have a visitor.